All right, guys, welcome back. Um, it's it's Hard Online's pro level matches, and I am your host, your esteemed host, DDK. And the entire point of the series, if you're new to it, is to essentially show you the way that I process the information in the game, my approach to it, how I analyze it, strate uh, strategic decisions and uh, tactical decisions as well. Um, and I pick random demos and we go through them. And now I've actually moved to a new place. I'm kind of getting. I'm in the uh, I'm in the process of getting set up, um, I can actually start pumping out these much more, and people seem to really like these. So, I'm, uh, and they, actually, they liked it a lot more than I thought they would. So, I'm going to tr uh, try to keep going with this because also it's just really good for me as a caster to be doing these sorts of things. And I do watch demos anyway. So, here we go. Um, this is Inferno, NV and NIP. So, bit of a vanilla map. NV not necessarily a vanilla team. They they are not. They don't play the most standard kind of strike in the world, but. Uh, of course they're really good. So without further ado, let's jump into the match and start talking about some of the, some of the decisions that are being made by the players. So if I do this, doop, there we go. Come on, come on, there we go. All right, okay, so as you can see, I've already loaded up um, the spot at, at the start of the round. And um, um, how do I get out? I don't know. Anyway, um, so we have MBK straight away here. Um, <laughs> he's got a shotgun, he's got a mag. Now the reason for this is their economy is really stretched. Um, we can see how terrible their money looks at the moment. It's it's really, really a poor sight to behold. S similar situation for NIP. However, NIP already have three rounds on the board. They've already got the lead. And uh, and obviously, of course, they've got like all the nades that they pretty much want. They've already, I think, expended a couple at the start of the round. But yeah, it looks really good for NIP at the moment. Um, of course, you really want to get a strong start as CTs get the economy going and all that jazz, whatever. So what I'm saying by making that point is you want to try, in in most cases, go for safer, more, less risky plays. Now, risk-taking is something that's an interesting concept. Um, so, for example, um, when 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 is the mo most appropriate time to go for a risk, let's say? So the most appropriate time, in theory, to go for a risk is when... Um, is when you have a situation where you have like a you know a good buffer of rounds, right? So you take a big risk, and you're like, okay, well this risk can can probably win me the game, um, but the problem is is that if if you know if we lose the risk, you know if it doesn't go our way, then you know we're going to lose quite a lot of rounds. But the thing is, if you have a buffer of rounds to work with, then you have more freedom to actually take some of these these high risk high reward uh, plays. Um, likewise, um, the same thing can be said uh, for money because sometimes you may not be ahead, you know, really uh, hugely. But let's say, um, or, or you might be in a situation where, let's say, this is a common one. Actually, MB do this all the time, whereby you want to essentially money fuck your opponents because you're like, okay, we're gonna have a terrible buy now. But if we buy now, then what we're doing is we're not letting the opposition get into a comfortable spot in the economy by giving them a free round by us ecoing. And so let's buy pistol armor, get some nades, you know, forget the rifles, and then we'll go in. Because even if we actually just, let's say, lose a round, we kill three or three three guys and plant the bomb, we can do this again the next round. Again, this is actually something Envy do all the time. Um, and keep the pressure on the economy. And they're always on like low economy buys with rifles. Maybe, maybe not even rifles some of the time. So, and if we win the round, well, boom, we win the round, we completely money fuck them, and then we get a really sick situation in our economy because now they're ecoing. And as and let's say if they're CTs, this is even stronger because as CTs, it's much harder to actually have us have a, a, a good chance to win a round with just pistols than it is the T's because because the T's can dictate, you know, they dictate the pace of the round. So, so these are like common situations where you want to like justify high risk, high reward plays. So, um, so that, that's just like, that's an extreme, uh, we're talking about high risk, high reward there. So if we go into, uh, back into this one, um, this is this is not necessarily a situation where we're looking at high risk, high reward, but we're in a situation where it does, I think, benefit NV in this in this spot with their CT setup, oops, uh, to actually say, okay, you know what, let's let's go for a, for, you know, a lower risk play. Now, how does, how is this relevant to, to, to what I'm talking about here? So in this area, okay, we've got MBK on a shotgun. These, this area is like so many close ranges. In fact, if we go to Freiburg, we'll see all the close ranges you can work with. You can have the behind the sandbags position. You can even stand in this like little archway, kind of where Exist is. Um, and you can have your teammate like happy. He's got an AK like pop flashing for you and stuff. You know, you've got the car to play with. You can even smoke forward. So if they want to push it, you know, you can you can get 
the smoke's going. In fact, you can get teammates from the other side of the map re-smoking as well. But the problem is, right, is that if you're going to be trying to play forward on banana, you do you do kind of want the ability to keep re-smoking your position. You kind of want that's one of these smokes to come from a player around this area, if possible, uh, so you can have three. Because then it's then it's obviously the safest way to play aggressively and deny map control and deny them options and uh, pressure their information game. So the thing is, though, is that they can't really afford to put extra smokes in there because Kiyoshima is on a 5-7, so they kind of need his smoke to make sure that they can actually more effectively defend the choke points um, on the A side of the map. The other thing as well is that if stuff goes badly here, Kiyoshima, once again, is going to have to retake um, with a 5-7. So he doesn't really have a good weapon. And they don't necessarily have, let's say, you know, Kyoshima was even missing a flashbang. You know, they don't necessarily have the best setup in the world. Um, so instead, what are they? What, are, what is Envy giving up in this round by not having this position close? Because we see teams playing this close all the time. In fact, we even see commonly from Envy that they'll smoke this choke point and even still get aggressive by actually like happy will like creep over this area over this um, wagon because they always place a smoke in the right spot that he can kind of creep over and barely appear and have vision over anyone who's in this area and just basically gun them down any he, people he gets away with that way too often um, anyway so the situation that they have now is they're saying okay let's play the safest possible setup um, with two players here of course the rotation towards B is, very, is much faster the big weakness in this this decision is that there's a huge pressure on shocks to actually hold this area down. If there is a smoke that lands there, it completely isolates shocks, and the players who are coming from from basically from quad and from balcony, shock is going to deal with all of those players basically by himself. Kiyoshima and Smith will have to rotate through here and actually try to get a you know a good good angle into into this area. But shocks is already in trouble by this point, and if they smoke off shocks. Um, completely, then these guys here are kind of screwed. So we can actually see that the weakness really is on A. There's lots of options for them to exploit this if they do decide to actually put the bulk of the push through onto Shox. Um, obviously Shox is a great player and that's why they've given him this responsibility. But um, but essentially, you know, this this play is much more tailored at, at the early stages of the round and that's an important, that's a key, key thing here. Um, so this is, this is a very key, key point actually. Um, Often I'll talk in casting about timings, and we, you know, everyone's familiar with with timings when it comes to let's say our oh, spawn timings. Okay, I spawn here on the fastest to this angle. It's very relevant with orpers, but the same can be is, is said for how you set up defenses in rounds. And this is something I think in a recent cast I talked about quite a lot because MV were using um, timings quite often. Um, I think it, I think it was against Hell, yeah, it was against Hellraisers. I think yeah, MV against Hellraisers. Yeah, that was it um, from Star Series Twelve. What happened was, NV decided to put three people on B at the start, like every round, because they basically made a read and they said, um, "We believe that timing-wise, the the only rush that these guys are going to be doing, they're never going to rush us on A. They're never going to flat out rush A. Any rush they're going to do is actually going to be towards B at the start of the round. So if we have three people at the start of the round on B, then in that sense, we'll always be safe from a B rush, and then." You know, then it, you know, on that presumption, we can just rotate the guy after about thirty seconds back around through speedway and down, down to um, back to the kind of default setup on A, and you know, we're we're laughing essentially because because um, now we have our free man setup on A on on A. Basically, like you have your cake and you you eat it as well because they get the perfect setup on B, and then the timing comes that the player re, re rotates around this area, and they have a nice two man setup one man set up here. So yeah, they have their cake and eat it. And just to quickly on this point highlight it, um, I know we're jumping into a lot of topics here, but um, but yeah, having the three man set up here, let's, let's just put an extra X there just to, for, the, for the effect. Um, the way Envy were doing it is they were putting two people on the A side, which meant that if there was a smoke here to isolate a player who was guarding from Arch, that's okay because they're still rushing into a two man setup towards this area, which is obviously still going to be just as strong and if they do go to watch side then these guys you know it's, it's easier for them to, to deal with that than then uh just one guy being here and having two guys two guys here like it's and this it's also more likely as well if they actually decide to push a so anyway um i digress a lot there so let's get back into this round they have taken a very safe setup here and they've, they've said to themselves 
Um, if NIP are going to actually push the B-bomb site, by the time they reach MBK's angle, which is this, by the time they actually reach MBK's angle, they are saying to to uh, Envy that they're basically committed. So Envy are giving up early information in favor of a stronger setup. But the other thing that Envy are actually giving up, which is why it's less risky, is if they are playing around this car position, what do we see every single team doing on Inferno? We see them pushing up Banana with one or two players to gain map control, to force the CTs back into the site. And that actually allows them more information. It allows them to have like players up here. And if they then take this area, let's say they, they force the CTs back and uh, the CTs, how do I change color? Okay, the CTs are like having to defend from like this area and from this area instead. So they, they've kind of given up this space. What happens then is that the, the T's can actually push them back so far that they can keep pressuring and then double back into a B play if they want because they know that they, they have banana control and these players will never see it coming. So this means that the CTs never know exactly what's going to happen and can't even tell it's too late. That's the entire idea of this. This is like the best case map control. Um, the best case map control for, for T's to have this area. This is the wrong, bad color for T's. But have to have this area, this area. I just like draw around all of it basically to have all of this, this side of the map. If they have all of this, then that's basically going to give them the most options and it's going to put the CTs in the dark the most. But yeah, so Envy is saying, you know what, our economy is really shit. We just want to have like a really, really good defense. So that's what is going on with, with this this setup here. Um, that's kind of the, the, the technicality behind it. Because one thing about if they're close here is that potentially if NMP decide to just go and play pick, picks, right? If they just go for pressure like what they have right now to start the round because this look the bomb is down here they they by no means have created a, a decision they've by no means actually said okay we're actually just going to attack b right now so what they're doing here is is clearing this out so if they were holding car and nip say have the nades and decide to actually push this or they just beat the nades and then they get a pick boom you've got one player on this site now that is a really scary situation and of, of course you know it's not. It's, it's it's so instead, you know, Envy are deciding to just play a less risky, risky play, and the only way, the only way for them to get fragged is if, if NIP are committing to the site, and this will allow these guys to instantly, more or less, go for a rotation. It will be very clear, basically. It'll be very, very clear as soon as MBK spots a guy, they'll or they'll see all the nades. These guys can rotate immediately. However, if they're around here and MBK and Happy see like one or two guys, they could, these guys have to kind of stay put because they don't really know what's going on. If they get pushed back a little bit then still these guys kind of really don't know what's going on. So, so yeah, that's a very long winded explanation of some decision making in this, in this open, in the opening stages here. Um, so let's just see how, how things actually develop here. So we've got, so we've got MBK. Actually whipping a few shots there. So this is, this is a really bad result. MBK only got one frag. Um, you can see he's actually kind of unlucky with his connections there. But either way, what did Happy do? Happy allowed himself to get smoked out of this area and he's moved back to construction. So construction is a very, very key area to actually hold because as we can see, construction is how you get into the site through this area. One really strong move that T's can make is to move all the way and take construction. Because imagine if, con if construction is held, they have all this space to work with then all of a sudden if the bomb is planted anywhere in this area the the, the teeth can you know essentially pop in and take pot shots from this area keep the pressure on they've got really good coverage and waits to fall back because of this little corner here they can take a you know peek take a shot you know fall back and uh you know if someone's trying to defuse they can even give up the site just to have construction and this, the same thing goes with with having banana they get the same kind of engagements they can peek in um take shots um Fall, fall back into, into banana uh, so so you know having construction is really really strong for the t's and likewise for the ct's if the ct's don't have this area to move through the only place that they can actually move through is going to be where sense is looking right now just like one huge choke point that's that's horrendous if, the, if this is the only place they can move through then what is happening there is no distraction so what is like a really awesome concept in CS? How, how do you see like lots of pistol rounds won basically? 
it's one guy's one rifle is like shooting one guy. It's like like shooting him, shooting him, shooting him, and then in that in the moment that he's like shooting that guy, he, that 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 dude kind of goes back behind the corner, like gets some cover or something. And in that exact moment, it, the guy is, he's being covered. Let's say he's a T. Um, is one of his teammates with a pistol comes in from another angle to shoot the CT. So he gets just that element of surprise to win the fight. And then maybe that distracts the attention of another CT. He looks that way. And then just at that moment, you know, just basically distraction. Distraction is a huge way that you win rounds. And if you have the situation where you're just all coming through one choke point, you don't have the ability to play from multiple prongs. You, you can't you can't have a distraction from any, any of these sides. You're not splitting attention. So you're making their lives really easy. So this is obviously a big problem. Um, to only have this area, so it's 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 uh, you have these these concepts on on the majority of bomb sites. So this construction really really important. Um, people, uh, some people call it ruins as well. I, just, I don't know why. I, I think I tend to call it construction. I can't remember. I've I've played every single iteration of CS, and I'm, I get used to calls from certain iterations, and I, I keep pressing the wrong button there. Um, so so yeah, but you can see. I mean, like there's like there's a construction stuff like sandbags and. Or, or is that a cement mix or something? Masonry, masonry, it's mortar. And you've got like a little generator here. And uh, not like uh, construction lights and like scaffolding. Yeah, I'm gonna stick, I'm gonna stick with construction. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so let's just play out the round here a little bit and see how this retake is going to occur. If I keep, let's really stop pressing that button. Used to James's binds from the face it config. Okay, so bomb is planted and we've got a four versus three four versus three situation now that Delpan just killed Kiyoshima. So this is really really tough to deal with and I think the volume's a little bit too high. Okay, so Happy is in construction. You can see Smith's trying to take some pot shots here. The bomb's only just planted, but with a three and four they they basically don't like their chances. And this is this is a fine call because if we again if we look at their money, it's so horrendous that with three players, if they're actually managing to survive with these three players, they can actually have a they can actually have a decent round in the following round still. So yeah, it's 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 a pretty good call for them not to go for this. I can agree with that. You also have to give respect to the fact that you're playing incredibly good players. So there you go, that's that round. Um, talked about a lot of stuff there actually. Um, let's find another buy round really quick. Okay, so here's another should be another buy round here for NV as they are down three rounds as well. So let's skip a little bit. Okay, now we got Smiths on an AWP. So let's quickly have a look at this. Now, when you're orping in a situation like this, there are some orpers who've got a very 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 obvious, I would say, decision making when it comes to how they peak middle. There's lots of different ways to actually peak down middle um, with the AWP. Now, first concern for the CTs as to how aggressive, this is like the predictable offer. Let's say this is like your Kuchar offer. Uh, Kuchar I, I consider um, to be a very stable, consistent offer at the moment, and his decision making seems quite clear. So with Kuchar, what he'll do is he'll basically assess how much money they have and how likely it is for them to have an AWP. If he thinks it's very likely for them either to have enough money for an AWP or to be playing with one um, regardless, just um, because obviously NIP can in this situation, whether they decide to or not is a different uh, different thing entirely. It will, it will change how he peaks this angle. So if, uh, if I... Well, let's just quickly have yeah. So this is basically the this is the most aggressive and the deepest angle that you can go for. This is what Kucha will do, for example, when he's like, well, they only have pistols right now. Kucha will do this angle. I rarely ever see this this angle from Kucha when he's uh, when he's when he, he you know the other team has a lot of money. Um, this this almost never happens. What Kucha will do instead is he'll take he'll take a much less deep angle. So if we um, I'll, sh I'll show you here. So actually actually Forrest just like absolutely just. Just wrecked him there. He just walked up with an AK. But this is the angle Kucha will usually take. So you can see it's not visible towards towards uh, the, the t top of T slope. So that that's like a safer angle to take. So basically, you still get control of middle. You still get information as to whether they're pushing middle, um, and you get an advantage on the shot. But you're not you're not giving yourself into a timing that they have, which is better, which is the the, the haystack timing. Um, so right now we're just on Smith's dead body. So let's quickly rewind that. Also, just these this awesome, super awesome shot from Forrest because, because that was pretty badass. 
So let's just uh, go to forest. It is number zero. There we go. Um, and then we'll talk about the rest of the round here. So forest actually messes up the, the smoke as well. And he's going to make up for that now. Okay, that's pretty nice. So, you lose the player at the start of the round. Now, this is always really, really tough as a CT, especially when it's your AWP. Uh, Kiyoshima doesn't need to be interested in, in removing the AWP and throwing it away, but essentially a two-man setup here and a two-man setup here is, is probably the, the most safe, effective way to play this um, at, at the start of the round. And because NIP now have the man advantage, all they have to, all they, all, what they can actually do is they can operate on the knowledge that it's very likely that we know that for NIP will say, okay, we know the best setup here for NB is going to be playing two men in this area and two men on the B side. So A is usually almost always going to afford stronger options on entries because you now don't have to necess necessarily worry about this angle. And even if you do, if you smoke it off, then at, at, at best you're, pl you're only playing against one guy here with your entire lineup to face him or you're playing against two guys there and with proper smokes and flashes and with you know just good entry players you should be able to overwhelm them because playing defensively in this area is much harder i would say than playing defensively in this area when you're down at least when you're down a player obviously when let's say they did smoke off arch and the smith was able to off from here um down like in this angle now you have some issues because now you've got shocks in here you've got a player on the site maybe and this angle there from from Smith. Now you've got problems. But if Kyoshima's you know falls back into the site and Shox is here, and uh, you have an IP in a situation where they can work up here and, and potentially flank, um, as well as have good nades into the site to break the crossfire between Shox and Kyoshima. Now you've got like a lot of strong options. So normally that's how you would expect a round to go like this. So what you would expect to see is NIP just being diligent and taking map control here, maybe in them doing so, they will get a pick on MBK here. Because part of the problem MV have is they, that they don't know where NIP are gonna basically push to. Um, because NIP, all they have to do is wait a few seconds for MV to adjust their setup into the 2-2, two, two, and then they can make a push, basically. Um, so MBK, you know, one thing that he could look to do with Happy's help with a flash over is try to find out early what's happening and then try to actually rotate one player back towards A. Because then if they have, you know, the three men out on A and if it is going to be an A push, maybe they have a better chance of actually defending it. So let's go to Happy at the, at the moment. We can see, yeah, he's holding a pot flash and we're going to have MBK looking for the peak over. So he, he wants to either like get a quick equalizing frag or just to get some information here. Obviously... NIP can have so much time to work with, they can actually be really annoying. And there is, there it is, a flash, it went too far over. This is this is a really big problem here. So actually, let's, let's look at this, and because we have the technology, we can actually follow Happy's flash, because this is really important actually, because obviously, if Freiburg had been properly flashed there, we're looking at a really different situation, really different situation. So let's like hold the alt here, so we're ready for the flash to go over, and let's see how the flash explodes, okay. Okay, he's going to throw the flash any moment now. Holding ult. There we go. So, throw the flash. Okay, that... Okay, let's... let's I want to look at Freiburg here to see why that didn't flash him. Because if we if we, if we we look at that, that actually exploded. Like, that exploded, like, up here, basically. It's like, right here. So, Freiburg basically was a little bit too close. So, it feels like one of those flashes where it's probably impossible to actually properly flash Freiburg there from Happy's position because that looked like a more or less perfect flash into Banana and you can you can really bet that that uh, this this stuff will have been drilled um, so if we just go back quickly to where we were and and look at the situation and by the way you know going for that information play and quick frag is actually a really smart choice because again you're playing against NIP and one thing at the very top level you have to you have to respect and realize is that you never want to let the let them play their strategy basically so this this is like a really important concept i'm just going to go back on the camera to just to just uh briefly mention this if you're holy shit, 24 minutes okay i'm gonna have to try to wrap this up soon but if you're playing against the best teams in the world you have a situation where you never want to let them play how they want to play you never want to let them set up for their execute you never want to let them just set up the round so every player can do their perfect job. You want to force them into awkward scenarios. You want to make sure that you're always putting pressure on and restricting their options and not letting them fall into their comfort zone. As soon as they hit their comfort zone, you're screwed against the best in the world. So MBK, 
with that play with the flash over. It's very basic. We can see the flash should have been, basically the flash actually got flashed everybody really well apart from Freiburg. He was a little bit too far forwards. So this is obviously the one kind of thing wrong with that. But Envy are also saying with a play like that on B, they're saying, look, we're, like losing guys so early on, we're aware that our chances in the round just went down massively. Um, just, just so massively that we need to take an equally big risk to try to get ourselves back into the round to have a good chance to win it because they're in it to win it they're not in it to like lose narrowly okay so that's a really important concept against the best teams in the world and also we saw Smith losing that duel against Forrest so Forrest is like tap tap and he's dead um, against Smith's Zorp now that's that's just you know some of these top tier players, players for you that shouldn't really happen that's just unlucky that's very unlucky that Smith was not able to get that so we'll quickly go to the rest of the round and I, I had no idea this is so long how, how do I talk so much I don't even know um Anyways, let's just jump back into this one really quick and finish off the round. Um, I try to I try to keep these minute these videos between twenty and twenty five minutes, even if I'm only looking looking at a couple rounds. But uh, okay, so we are. Are we? Is the game crash? No. Okay, we're good. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. I was, I was pressing the wrong button. Okay, let's uh, fast forward a little bit. Let's go to the auto director. Okay, so what happens is, of course, Freiburg able to take down MBK. Happy's now in a situation where he's really screwed. Um, at the same time, on the other side of the map, um, Shox was actually pushing apartments, and he actually got a frag. So let's actually quickly look at that, because we need to see exactly how MV played that. Like, what what use, uh, what tactical plays did they go for to actually allow that to happen? So we're on Shox at the moment. Um, Smith gets annihilated by Forrest. Shox is in the balcony. Kyoshima, what is he trying to do here? What is Kyoshima trying to accomplish? So Kyoshima's picked up the AWP, in fact. Okay, now this is really, this is actually really smart because I told, you know, I said that, uh, you know, he doesn't need to worry about leaving the AWP there for the enemies to pick up. But he's decided that this would be a really, really good choice for this angle. And it is really strong at this angle. And having just lost um, Smith, they may not expect an AWP to be on this angle. And they may also expect to be a bit more comfortable peaking boiler for information. So Freiburg just got the entry on MBK here. And we've seen this uh, from Shox before. He's got these, see this like arc here? He's got a really sick pop flash um, that you guys should totally copy. And look at look how blind Get Right is. Get, Get Right could not react to that. And it's it's a free frag for Shox. So Shox is able to, to take these frags, but in the meantime, they know that Happy's getting pushed. So this is actually an awkward situation for NIP because they're actually losing people on both sides of the map here. So because there's so much time left and they still have an advantage, they need to basically accept, like cut their losses and accept that they've not been able to pull this off here. Happy A was able to actually defend by smoking himself off and just winning the frag, basically, winning the one-on-one. -on -one. Now Delpan is looking like he wants to push through here. I don't think this is advisable because, again, we have to consider the time here. Time, it plays into the favor of NIP. The time, or the, the numbers, plays into the favor of NIP. They also, NIP also have more information now. They know actually that it's just one guy here. Um, they don't know where Kiyoshima is yet. Because Kyoshima hasn't really been visible, so they don't know which way Kyoshima is going. But they have time to actually find out. Do they have grenades? Yes, they have a lot of grenades to work with as well. Um, so I, I would definitely think that Delpa moving through here through the smoke would be a very risky play. But looks like he's going to go for it. And he does actually. He is actually going to manage to make the frag happen. Now, obviously, um, um, Obviously, a lot, a lot of these players are playing like very, very much in the moment. So you know, we're able to start pause, reanalyze odds and stuff like that. So if we just go back to Delpan to kind of look at the situation he's in, because sometimes you get a window of timing whereby it is always going to be worth it to go kind of aggro like that. So let's just quickly look at Delpan in this situation. Freiburg made the entry. Delpan rushes through the smoke. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so from, from Delpan's perspective, because because we're starting and stopping, it looked like he was just waiting in the smoke. But obviously, like, he actually, that's kind of a nice AK. Um, obviously, that makes a lot of sense. He basically got the trade there. So ignore what I said. Um, <laughs> obviously, uh, we're, I was operating from a perspective that he was just like, he was kind of still behind the smoke and that Happy was essentially ready. But Happy had just killed, had just killed Freiburg. His position was known. And Delpan was literally right behind Freiburg. So... We, we put our focus down here so we didn't we didn't see that exactly um so so yeah that's a really nice trade coming in from delpan here um onto happy so now this is a really awkward situation of course we're gonna get the rotation coming in with exist looking for the flank 
Hiroshima and Shocks have have to like f have first of all have to try to like get themselves into construction here, but you can see how impossible that is. So now they have to think about their money yet because it's, it's, they can't get into basically a position which would be this area that would allow them to actually retake this. If Shocks was actually around this area around Banana, it actually might be possible for Kyoshima to make a play in using Shocks. To, to get in on top of the site. They have actually odds there to win the round, I think. However, with this smoke just planted, this is gonna be what, like, the bomb The bomb is gonna be down like to 15 seconds before they've even really like properly pushed construction, before they've even been on properly push pull. So by the time they get the frags, they're still probably gonna lose the round. So, and the economic damage they're gonna do, as you can see to the, uh, looking at the economy of NIP, it's, the economy is really nice for NIP. So the economic damage they do at this point is, is not even a factor, it's neg negligible completely. So trying to save here is a really smart choice. Um, but uh, I do think though it might be worth going for because they're so damn good that if Shox was around the banana area, that they could actually make, try and make this work. Um, also from the perspective that they do need rounds. And then you just have to, justify um, how, how winnable do they do they feel that this is and with Shox and Kyoshima I, th I think that they could actually do it if, if Shox was in this area uh, by the time Kyoshima was here at the start of this smoke going down um, considering that they still have full nades as well but uh, of course you know Kyoshima does actually have an AWP as well that he's thinking to save so yeah um, really really easy save here and uh, it's just down to avoiding exist I guess and they, they probably are aware that there's there could be somebody lurking around as there was presence in apartments previously and they only saw two people uh, happy would have only called two people so they should actually be able to work out that there is one guy lurking so uh so yeah um that this video i feel like a bit rusty um but hopefully you guys got something out of that that's like 30 minutes i don't believe it um i'm gonna go upload these and go to the office and upload these um hope somebody found something useful about this and i'll just keep basically i'm just gonna keep doing these 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 will just keep coming out and We'll look at loads of situations and talk about loads of stuff. I'll basically just bring up anything that comes to mind, how I think about different situations or, or you know, what concepts are, are at play, in my opinion. And um, we'll just, yeah, we'll just keep going with it and we'll, we'll see where it leads us. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I know that it, it was a really long one. And it was only two rounds. So if you actually made it through, then good job. Good job. Thumbs up, high five, fist bump, all that kind of stuff. Because you deserve it. Um, all right. I will see you for the next one. And I'm going to be trying to do a either a cache, but basically just maps that I haven't been haven't done yet. I want to do all those maps, and then I'll probably just just find what was interesting. I also really want to do a CT spotlight on Crims because I saw uh, he has a he had a really sick result on one cache game. I know I just did him as well, so I don't know. Maybe a Kenny, another Kenny S one. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, cheers, guys. See you next time.